Hi mga kaosh, kumusta po kayo? This is Engineer Ellen from the Occupational Safety and Health Center Regional Extension Unit Number 8. On our previous video, we were able to discuss about the different forms that you have to utilize pag tayo ay magsasubmit ng mga iba't ibang mga reports na nire-require ng Occupational Safety and Health Standard. So dito naman sa video na ito, pag-uusapan po natin kung paano i-fill up ang Registry of Establishment. So this is actually a requirement under Rule 1020 of the Occupational Safety and Health Standard. So lahat po ng establishment, be it small, medium, or large establishment, you are required to register with the Department of Labor and Employment Regional Office who have jurisdiction over your workplace. Okay, so sa video na ito, I'm going to walk you through on how to fill up the form. Okay, come on. So this is the form that we're going to use. This is the form called BWC-IP3. So Republic of the Philippines, Department of Labor and Employment, Regional Office Number. So dito, ilalagay natin yung dollar regional office number who have jurisdiction over your workplace. So if you are located in Tacloban City, so therefore, the dollar regional office who have a jurisdiction over your workplace is the doll, uh, regional office number 8. So, depende po kung saan yung location na uh, workplace niyo or yung uh, company niyo. So, you have to write down dito yung regional office number. Dito, the EIN, you don't have to fill this up. So, hindi nyo po kailangan i-fill up ito because it will be the Department of Labor and Employment who's going to give you this because this is what we call the establishment identification number. So, lahat po ng establishment na nagre-register kay... Uh, or sa Department of Labor and Employment, they will be given an establishment identification number upon registration. So, ito po yung dito. So, you do not have to fill this up. So, we'll present with number one. Number one is the name of your establishment. So, dito po isusulat po ninyo kung ano yung pangalan ng establishment ninyo. Okay? So, you have to make sure that the, the name you're going to write it here ay pareho doon sa pangalan. So, DTI registration ninyo kung ito ay sole proprietorship or doon sa set registration ninyo. So, yung complete name of your establishment, do not abrogate it, okay? Or, or going yung acronym. So, you have to write down the complete name of your establishment of your, or your company. Number two is the address. Ito naman yung address, ilalagay nyo kung saan yung address ng branch ninyo or ng establishment ninyo. Do not put the address of your main office or your head office for this matter. Okay, so yung location ng establishment ninyo, ano ba yung, yung branch na nire-register ninyo dito, saan ba located? So dito ilalagay natin yung address ng branch na yun or ng establishment na yun. So you have to write it here, the street, the, the, the city and and the municipality, and the province. Next, for number three, is you have to write down the tax identification number of your establishment, so yung TIN number. Number four is you have to write down the telephone number. In case you do not have your telephone number, you can write down your mobile number. Because ito yung uh, magiging uh, way of the Department of Labor and Employment to communicate with you. So, one way to communicate with you, if in case may kulang kayo sa mga requirements na kailangan submit. Okay, so kung may mga concerns sila, so they can uh, call you through your mobile phone kung wala kayong landline number or telephone number. Then here is your fax number. So kung meron kayong fax number, you also have to write here your fax number. And of course, your email address, sa company email address. So you have to write down ano ba yung company email address niyo. Number five is the name of the manager or the owner. So you have to write down the name of the manager or the name of the owner on number five. Then on number six is the nature of business of your company. So nature of business and product manufactured or services rendered or merchandise being sold. So example, if you are a manufacturing company, so for example, a food manufacturing company, so you have to put here manufacturing dash food. Okay, so if uh, you are in a construction, so you have to put here, uh, example, you're, you're contracting or constructing buildings. 
Okay, so pwede nyo lagyan construction tapos building or if not, you're in the agriculture. So, dependent na lang po sa'yo. Or if you are on the service, so what service do you render or services that you are rendering? For example, services such as janitorial services. So, you have to write down here, okay, for the nature of uh, business of your establishment. Now, let's proceed with number seven. For number seven is the number of employees in your workplace. So, ilang workers ba meron tayo? Lahat ito, okay? Lahat ng workers na naka-employ doon sa workplace natin. So, here, we're going to get the number of Filipino workers. Ilang male workers that are Filipino. So, isulat po natin dito, Filipino workers kung ilan. Then, we have here, uh, Filipinos that are female workers. Okay? So, mga babaeng Pilipina. Next is we have the resident alien, ilang male resident alien. Then ilan naman workers na female which are resident alien. Then non-resident alien we have for male here. So you have to write down kung ilan. Dito naman yung female. So if you have the answer to this, you have to add this para makuha natin yung total number of male workers. So your total number of male workers is you have to add Total number Filipino male, na, uh, resident male, non-resident male. Ano yung total nito pag na-add natin is the total number of male workers. Now, for the female workers, ilan yung female workers natin? Also, it's the sum of the female na Filipinos and the sum of female who are resident alien and sum of female who are non-resident aliens. So, isasum natin yan or i-add natin, that will give us the total number of female workers in our workplace. Now, out of the total number of male workers that we have, okay, so yung na-add natin, ilan po ang below 15 years old? So, sulat po natin dito, ilan po ang below 15 years old from the total male workers? Ilan naman po yung female na below 15 years old from the total number of female workers. Ito naman yung 15 to 17 years old. So, ilan din na lalaki, ilan din na babae. So, same thing dito, ilan din for 18 to 30, 30 years old na male at saka yung female. And workers, male workers who are above uh, 30 years old and uh, female workers who are also above 30 years old. So, para sa total, all we have to do for the grand total, for the total number of workers, ia-add natin yung total number of male workers plus the total number of female workers will give you the grand total number of workers or employees in your establishment or in your workplace. So, dito naman, ia-add din natin ilan ba lahat na Filipino workers meron, ilan din yung resident alien. So, you just have to add, ito ia-add natin. Resident alien that are male and resident alien that are female. So when you add that, will give you the, the total number of resident alien. Then dito naman, the total number of non-resident alien. Total number of workers which are below 15, both male and female. Then here, total number of workers whose age is 15 to 17. Dito, workers who are 18 to 30, and this one is above 30, okay? So, number eight, let's proceed with number eight. Number eight is the name and address of the labor union, if any. So, kung unionize po yung workers ninyo, so you have to write on what is the name of the union, anong pangalan, at of course, ano yung address ng labor union. Kasi pag nag-register sila, mayroon naman talaga silang uh, address. Okay? So, ginagamit na address yung mga union natin. So, of course, if wala naman na uh, hindi unionize yung workplace ninyo or yung workers ninyo, just put NA, not applicable. And of course, you have to write down also here your BLR registration number in this portion if unionized. Else, pag hindi rin unionize, okay, so hindi walang union, right, not applicable or NA. Now, let's proceed with number nine. For item number nine, this is the technical information. So, you just put a check, okay, to enumerate. Uh, first is, do you have circular? So, for, for 9A is the machinery, equipment, and other devices in use in your workplace. So, the question is, do you have circular? So, if yes, you just have to put a check here. Okay, so kung may circular so kayo, put a check here. 
sa engine that is diesel or di diesel operated engine if yes if you have it you put a check machine drill press if you have you put a check else kung wala leave it blank then gasoline operated machineries if meron you check it boiler if you have boilers you check here pressure vessel internal combustion engine and others now here on the others if you have other machiners, kung masyadong marami kayong mga machineries, equipments, and devices na hindi ka siya ilagay dito sa space, you can attach. Okay? You can have an additional uh, paper, additional uh, attachment for this. So, you write, you can write it here, see attached. Okay? Or pwede si annex A, for example. So, you can do that for the list of other machineries and equipment that are not being mentioned in this uh, given 9A items so next is for 9b 9b is the materials handling equipment so do you have any materials handling equipment in your workplace such as power trucks so power trucks hand trucks conveyors forklifts or cranes so you have to write it here so let uh, i mean you have to check you have to put a check kung alid meron kayo and still if meron pa kayo mga additional na mga material handling equipment na wala dito, you can check you, you can put a check dito sa others. Then you have to specify kung ano yon. So kung marami, again you can add uh, an annex to this an additional sheet of course. Number nine C is the chemical or substances used or handled in your workplace. So ano ano ba yung mga chemicals na ginagamit sa workplace niyo? Lalo lalo na yung mga hazardous chemicals. So you have to write down all the chemicals that you're using in your workplace. So dito po natin yun. So same thing. Kung masadong marami yung chemicals na ginagamit niyo, you can attach additional sheet for this. Now let's proceed with number ten. Number ten, if branch unit name of parent establishment. So, eto na po yung kung ang nirehistro natin dito, ang nireregister natin dito ay isang branch unit lang or branch establishment. So, isusulat po natin dito. Ano po yung name ng establishment, ng main, okay, or head office or your parent establishment. So, isusulat natin yung pangalan and the location of the uh, main establishment in your okay or head office in next is we have your number 11 is the current capitalization so sa current capitalization magkano ba yung capitalization of your establishment 5 million 10 million 15 million so on okay so you have to write it here kung ilang milliones ba yung capitalization ng establishment in and of course here is you have to write down the total assets Okay, so total assets of your establishment. And please don't forget for item number 12 is you have to attach a copy of your DTI registration or your SEC registration and of course your business permit. So i-attach po natin yan dito. That's for item number 12. Now for this one, for item 13 to 15, kapag ito ay re-registration, meaning to say nagkaroon ng pagbabago either sa name of the company or the ownership, and the location of uh, the company. So you have to submit this as re-registration. So kung re-registration po, so number 13, past application number. So you have to write down the past application number and the date of application. So kailan ba nag-apply? Then if changing name of establishment, okay, so kung nagbago po tayo ng pangalan ng establishmento, Okay, so kung may changes, you have to write down the former name. Ano ba yung dating pangalan ng establishment ninyo? Number 15 is changing location. So kung nag-transfer kayo ng location, yung establishment ninyo, you move from one barangay to the other barangay or from, one, or from one city to the other city but still on the same region, so you have to write it here. So ano yung past address? So bigyan nyo yung dating address ng company nyo kung siya, saan siya located. And of course, the last is are hereby certified that the above information is true and correct. So signed by the owner or the president of the company. Now on this portion, dito sa last portion natin, you don't have to fill this up because this will be filled up by uh, the Department of Labor and Employment in charge. So sila po sa receiving and issuing and approving, sila po ang mag fill up nito. Okay? So after doing this, if all your documents are complete, you can submit it to the regional office who have jurisdiction over your workplace.
Okay, so hopefully we were able to assist you on how to fill up the registration of establishment form. And hopefully, if, kung hindi pa kayo nakapag-register, pag-register na po para hindi po tayo ma-penalize. Because under Republic Act 11058 and its implementing rules and regulations, the Dole Department Order 198 Series of 2018, meron pong penalty pag kayo ay hindi nakarehistro. Okay, so hopefully this will uh, be uh, of help to you. And thank you so much. Stay safe, everybody. Bye bye.